March 22nd through 24th, and there's going to be a bunch of other speakers there from across the country. So, uh, but this is going to be focused on all things real estate, so rentals, whatever you guys want to get out of this. So, no agenda whatsoever. And now, Max Maxwell! Woo! How y'all doing tonight? Great. Long night, long night, kind of, but uh, thank you guys for coming out. Um, I'm in, uh, I was in St. Louis, I'm in St. Louis for a bull riding event, actually. And, uh, what? You know, we got that here? Story, yeah, so at the, uh, at the Enterprise Center. We saw him online. Oh, you have yeah. to ask him. I tried to go to the country. You follow me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's real random. I have no structure to this. We literally stand up here and the guy from Christina, she's, uh, she's the queen in St. Louis. So That's right. Yeah. Uh, when I'm passing through, I try to link up with people I know. So she's, I, I associate with Christina and she speaks in my events and we hang out in personal time because I know she actually does this business. She actually probably does more deals than I do on a monthly basis. So uh, she she runs, she's a wealth of knowledge, and uh, she was actually schooling me. Actually, the Airbnb, I'm staying at, mm. at the Airbnb. Fun she time. walks in, she's like, I wholesale this house. Uh, ah. Ah. <laughs> she's telling me, she goes, out the basement. She goes, I'm like, let's go down there. Let's go in the basement. <laughs> so that's cool, man. So to see that she, and, and that's why people, there's a full impact as a wholesaler, right? She found something that needed somebody wanted to sell or needed to sell. Actually, it was a base, right? Yep. Like, it's a house on Wyoming. I don't know if you guys like there was like a whole street. front was falling down, but they don't put it up. Yeah. yeah. So they, yeah. They, they STL Real Estate's the one that bought it, and so, um, they rehabbed it. And Airbnb has it now. So yeah, they, they dumped a lot of money <laughs> in that property, and it's Airbnb. So now, now it's another tax-producing asset that the city has. And you know, that's cool. So it started with the wholesale thing all the way. So I'm staying in the Airbnb now for like 250 bucks a night. Or so. Nice. Uh, but it's a huge house. I got the I got the PR team playing with it. So, um, but other than that, man, there's really no structure to this. We just like to chop it up and just talk about real estate. There's a lot of content online for me and other people. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate the real from the fake. Um, and there's a lot of white noise. Sometimes you get half of an instruction and you don't understand it. Uh, at these meetups, there's a time you can be very selfish and ask questions that you actually want to know the answer to. I don't care how simple it may, you may think it is or how complex you think it is. And guess what? I'm not a guru, so if I don't know the answer, I don't know the answer for you. So uh, I'm actually growing this business every single day. I'm pretty sure you do too. I don't claim to know everything. I learn a lot. I lose thousands of dollars every month by learning. But it's uh, I make thousands of dollars every month by, by knowing what I already know as well too. So I hope that real estate changes everybody's lives in this room how it's changed mine. Most of you know my story. A couple years ago, I was broke in the back of a farm. Now I run a couple multi-million dollar businesses, and it's all because of real estate. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, fire away with your questions. Kind of just raise your hand, shoot off your question, however you want to do it, and uh, either I or Christine will answer. Cool. Questions. Questions. All right, come on now. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, what what do you do to um, once you get that to that ceiling of wholesaling that you you know you, you're just uh, I'm with my partner right here. We're two two men show. We cannot be everywhere all the time. Yeah. So I've reached the ceiling uh, that I can't pass, and and as far as horse wholesaling wholesaling. So what would you give me as an advice? So you're saying you hold, you, because you're a two-person operation, because of your people or your staff, you can't go beyond that? Or are you saying? Uh, pretty much right now, I haven't scaled it. Like, it's just two of us, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So I know scaling it would be the next step, but it would be hiring call callers, hiring people to walk my property for me. What would be your next step? Yeah, so that's, that's interesting, because I'm actually, 
even though we do X amount of meals a month, I'm actually growing my, my staff right now. It's the hardest thing you can ever do. Mm-hmm. Um, if any entrepreneur is, if ever knows that the hardest thing you can ever do is hire people to run the business as passionately as you run it. Mm-hmm. Right? So what I've been doing is, is documenting everything that I do. Um, I recently put out a video and I broke my business into four quadrants. Right? And I think it's uh, acquisitions, dispositions, admin, marketing, marketing, right? So once you, Somebody watch yeah, the video. You, right? <laughs> <laughs> so once you, once you do this, the marketing, all the marketing stuff that you're doing, right, this is your lead generation, then you start documenting exactly how you do that, right? So if it's simple as putting out banner signs, you document exactly how you do that. It could be by video, by words you like to write, or by, by or both, right? I like doing video because I hate to write, and then I can actually show people what exactly what I'm doing. And then if you're talking about like, um, you know, like say you say you're one of your marketing methods, you post five Craigslist ads every day. Well, get that on video, and all your processes in video, every single one, and document your entire business. It takes a while, but it's worth it once you have it. Now, when you start to fire yourself for certain tasks, right? Because as a two-person operation, if you are using banner signs, you are putting out at night. If you are doing Craigslist ads, you are doing them yourself. If you're driving for dollars, you are doing it yourself. So you have to start eliminating those things so that other people can do that for you and you can start to grow. I would just outsource those like smaller tasks. So like when you break it down into your business, it's like outsourcing like the band designs and there's like an app, you know, simple <coughs> or something. Yeah, that's a little bit cost up front, but if you're getting the return on investment on your band designs, then it doesn't really matter. So just scale what works is what I always say. Like, don't try to scale something that you haven't done yet. Yeah. Like, scale what works, and then eliminate, like, the small, minute processes um, off of your plate, because you're worth more per hour. I know the kind of volume that you do. So, you're worth way more per volume, you know, per hour, than you would pay, you know, VA to close on Craigslist. Exactly. Whatever. Yeah, whatever, whatever you hate doing the most, and it's not really, I say whatever you've mastered, mm-hmm. the last thing you should be letting go is your acquisition side of the business. Right, you actually going out with an appointment and acquiring a contract, that's where the money's been. So you don't want you, that's the last thing you should be firing yourself last from that. I, I don't I go on appointments sometimes, but not as much as I used to in the last year. So you know I'm slowly firing myself to that. To be honest with you, I enjoy going out it's my favorite. Yeah, I enjoy going out to the houses and negotiating and not getting fifty percent off what they ask for. Like it's just it just feels good when you go on this thing. So But I mean that's also like the like I have someone who walks on my because he walks all my houses for me. And he, it's because he's been, he's watched me do it so many times that I trust him with my life. Like, literally. So it's, but it's, you can't trust everyone like that. And like he said at the beginning, it's like, not everyone takes the pride in your business, but I know, like, Chauncey's just as invested as I am in my business. So, yeah, I would put that last if you don't have someone that you trust like that. Oh, good question. Good answer. Next. Yes, sir. How would you assess the uh, marketing and saying, how would I? I think she's probably better. You say any market, or you say this one? Yeah, she. That's her. <laughs> um, I mean, it really depends what area you're talking about. So, um, we have so many different things going on where I like I like to put myself up against anyone. Number one, cash flow market. Um, I mean, I bring so much money out of country and out of state. So, what, so break that down. Maybe for people that don't understand. When you say cash flow market, what does that really? So mean? rentals. So that's like one of the things that I've been like really, really preaching to St. Louis, period, um, is a lot of times like you'll see that there's a house with a tenant in it, and you're like, oh, I can't wholesale that. Or you'll be like, oh, there's a tenant, like I'm not going to mess with it. Well, just so you know, Christina buys a shit ton of tenant-occupied houses, so just keep them for me. <laughs> but yeah, so cash flowing is like with a tenant or with, with that in mind. And it might be vacant right now, but it'll be, you know, it'll get rehabs and then tenanted with that. So what I'm talking about is Jennings, Delwood. Delwood's kind of either or, really depends what price point you're at. Um, so like that's what I'm talking about. Like your Spanish Lake, either or. Um, sometimes there's some first time home buyers there, but there's also a lot of rentals around. So it's nice because I can tell you exactly what cities and municipalities I'm talking about. Northwood, um, some parts of Pine Lawn, like North City, like things like that are all transitioning. So we have a lot of rentals that a lot of buyers out of state and out of country are trying to buy right now. So you guys can really capitalize on that. But then we have Tower Grove right here where they're putting up Airbnbs, flipping houses, Kirkwood, Ladue, all these other upscale neighborhoods that 
we have literally everything in our market. We, we literally touch on almost every segment, like on a large scale, not on a small, like, oh, only one little piece of it is cash flow. So, did that answer your question? No, but uh, Do you want me to expand on that? Jay, it's Jay, right? Yes. Yeah, did that cover? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, basically, <laughs> going at, there's, there's a lot of wholesale deals, but there's a lot, you can still wholesale cash flow and cash flow, mm -hmm. especially because the ROI on the cash flow is just huge compared to most places in the country. Yep. So you're saying you're getting money from out of the country. Right. I mean, they're, they're, that's where she's niched or something right here. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's that. I don't think I'm sure. Somebody yeah. said hi to you. Yeah, yeah. Like morning. Morning. <laughs> um, how did you kind of get value in return off? Um, so for me, a, a value, so you heard the word comps, right? Um, value really depends on, one, you should really, the reason why I preach driving for dollars is you start to learn areas and neighborhoods. And I think that's more important than an actual comp of the money, right? But then when you break it down and you actually start looking at comps, you want to look at things in that neighborhood or within like a half a mile that's sold recently in the last six months. You know, same, roughly the same square footage, roughly the same building, same bedroom and bath. You want to, and that's what they mean by a comparable. Um, so you're able to find, because what you're looking for is what this house can be worth after this good stuff. That's your main thing, right? And you start negotiating down from there. Uh, repairs is a tricky one. I don't, I've never been able to give a real good answer. Um, but it takes some legwork. Unless you just had some construction history or anything like that, I would partner up with a contractor and, and pay them or have them walk through a house with you three or four times so you can start getting the ideas. Because your job is just to get a rough number. You don't need to be a contractor. You just need to know that, hey, look, a standard size window in St. Louis installed is 350 bucks, right? Flooring is two dollars a square foot installed. Whatever that number is, you know. And bathroom, just say a, a rough and full bath is like eight grand or you know whatever. And then you just have those rough numbers and you start putting it together. Like I literally don't turn it into a science. I walk into a house, it's either 20, 25, 30, 40. <laughs> right. Like I just, just know, and it's pretty much spot on where where you're going to be at. Um, but it's really not up to you to give a repair cost either. Right. Right. Yeah. I stop throwing out repair costs on our deals because I don't want it to seem like I don't want a buyer to hold me accountable for saying it's fifty and he goes in there and it's eighty. Right. So I just try to get a ball ballpark just so I can negotiate with that. And I just try to slam dunk the deal so it don't matter what the repairs are. Yeah. I mean, if you have enough spread, and it is kind of hard with those like tight cash flowing deals when our ARV is only forty five grand or something like that, and so it's hard to like reverse engineer that um to see if it is actually something that makes sense. But when it comes to repairs, like honestly, like there's a, I'm looking, there's a ton of buyers in here. So if for some reason you have a deal and like we could walk the house with you, and I'll be like, hey, it's gonna be like I'm my cost is about ten grand. So we like just fit that off because it's something that we would want to buy anyways. So then that way it's a learning experience for you. Um, it's hard to get a contractor to walk with you every time, especially if you're not compensating them. Like that's a bad idea. Thankfully, I had a friend who was a contractor, so that was nice. But that's not a good idea to be like, hey, like can you walk this house? I might buy it, but you're not. Buy it. You I might. I think you, if you kill the seller with kindness, mm -hmm. they like you. Think it's a ten thousand dollar rehab? Negotiating on a twenty thousand dollar rehab, mm -hmm. right? Like, so it's like because contractors, people that flip houses for a living, don't pay what they pay, no. right? So if I, like, if I had a house and I go on the you know, yellow pages or Google and I type in new bathroom, a guy's gonna come to my house and charge me thirteen thousand dollars. For me, at my market, I can get done for twenty nine hundred. Yeah. So you know, there's just a difference. So whatever you think it is, double. Negotiate based on that. There you go. Yes, sir. I'm big Max. Thank you. Uh, right now, I got two questions. One, I'm in the midst of changing tax lien. Third sale, rules, third sale, second sale, tax lien. I got some information, so they don't make title mess. Also, if any buyers are in here, I have a property. <laughs> Are you going to go to the auction in August and bid on it? Well, or are you trying to get it before it goes to the auction? Before. The auction is 
option is in August. Yeah, and, August 20th. Uh, right, and I've been following up behind the three to five year behind me. I mean, behind on the taxes. Okay, time. so those are different. Post third, post third, if you have money, I would go directly post third. I have the reason why is because you can eliminate your penalties and your interest. Right. So with that, just whenever you buy it, whenever your bid is approved, then you would be able to do what's called a quiet title suit after that. Um, but if it's before that, so just for general, this is really good information anyways. So if someone's delinquent, they're going to tax sale, whether it's first tax sale, which means they're three years past due or after, before post third. <laughs> um, so that entire process, you can actually, if, if the tax certificate has been purchased at the auction, the seller still has the right to redeem in one year, okay? There are title companies in St. Louis that will allow you to redeem at the same time of selling. Mm. What is it? True title. True title. True title. I just closed my last deal with them. They bring a day of True title so working with a company like with Bill. Title that understands this business is, is, is important to have a company like that or a person like that on your team mm -hmm. um, because they will work with you. Yes, sir. And would you say you need to support those kind of companies more than the others? 100%. Mm -hmm. Right? Because if you, if, and, and, and because if not, I don't know who the affiliation is. No, he Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, 
Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I wanted to pay. That's why I was talking Yeah. I'll send you my invoice and you can be like, hey, bro, <laughs> she is paying $300. <laughs> so, yes, so my team was plugged and we're starting to read a club right here, March 6th, in this space. What is your take on Ria Club for somebody new in the business or somebody who's been doing this for a while, but the networking aspect of Ria Club? So here's my thing. I like to the new Rias. I don't like the good old boy Rias. Yep. Okay. <laughs> right? Absolutely. So I don't actually attend any Rias, but I, tra I traded my own synergy in my market because there's a difference, right? Uh, and, and I'm just speaking for my market. They see us as a threat uh, big time. Uh, but the new Rias that are created, everybody's standing, they, they, they embrace this stuff, right? Because it's just like everybody's in the real estate, it's just that everybody gets more deals, more transactions are happening, the city's popping, everybody's making more money. You know, it's just, it's, it's uh, there's a difference. So, jo Aria, being a part of like minded people, anyways, I don't care what it costs to get in it or what it's, it's worth it. 100%. Yeah. So, um, the launch party is March 6th, it's going to be here in this space. Um, it's the city Ria, so there is going to be some county stuff, but we're really trying to focus on city because so much of us are doing stuff in the city. Um, we're going to be focusing on like opportunity zones, which is like a huge buzzword. Max and I were talking about it on, <laughs> on the way over here. Million dollars for opportunities. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, so it's a it's a really good um, North City revitalization, which is something that if most of you know me, like I'm super passionate <coughs> about North City. So we're going to be talking about that kind of stuff. Um, but it's just going to be networking like this, even when, you know, we get off of here, like, I want you guys to, like, meet each other and talk to each other, like, this is why we do this, is so you guys can join venture on deals, so that you guys know who's buying, who's selling, like, what is going on in this market, um, because, yeah, on Facebook, like, everything is on Facebook, but, like, to meet each other, yeah, know and know people, and, like, interact, and, like, see where someone's head is at, is way more important. So, I'm on free tickets to that. FlippingSTL.com. For the Rio. Free tickets on FlippingSTL.com. Because that, that's the real reason I do these meetups. So that this continues after I'm on a flight tomorrow at 11 o'clock. <laughs> Probably won't be back in St. Louis until next year. Too cold here. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is, you guys have to create this group of energy and just exchange, exchange numbers. And you guys are going to run into each other in restaurants. And the conversation is going to be different. Because I know when I was started out wholesaling, it was a very lonely journey. Mm. None of my friends want to talk about real estate. Mm -hmm. Couldn't talk to it about family. And it's just like, you just go around talk, almost talking to yourself about it. You know? <laughs> 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 yeah. Being able to talk to other people, just having those conversations, and you're going to lose a lot of friends too, over that you just care about real estate so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, your mindset just shifts. Like, it's a completely different mindset to like see things in a different light and like want, like, you're just thinking about different things that your friends are thinking. When you're driving, you're looking at houses. <laughs> 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 Head on a swivel. It's like you probably should not 